I talk about symbolism of colours quite a lot when I'm doing magic tricks. But it's not just me. All the societies give meaning to colours. And uh, if I was to give a lady a red rose, we all know what it means, doesn't it? It means that I love you. If I was to give someone a ring with a blue topaz stone in it, it symbolises love and fidelity. Fidelity means faithfulness, honesty and loyalty. And white is the colour of purity, of cleanliness, innocence and perfection. And that's why traditionally here in the UK, brides wear a white dress. Green stands for, for nature, for growth, balance and healing. I've got a, a green handkerchief here and I'm going to use this to represent the world. And the Bible says that God created the world and after he created the world he created mankind. And when he finished he looked at the world, he looked at mankind and he said it is good. I've also got a yellow or a gold handkerchief which I'm going to use to represent God. The Bible says that God is the King of Kings. And I imagine God living in a, in a golden palace, seated on a brilliant white throne with a, a shimmering rainbow above it. It tells us that it's a fantastic place to be where I guess everybody would kind of like to live somewhere like that. Well, in the beginning, God and man had a really special relationship. They would walk and talk together each day. But then one day, man disobeyed God, broke his rules, and at that point, God and man became separated. God never stopped loving mankind, even if mankind stopped loving him. But there was no way that man could get back to God. The, the, that relationship had been broken, and between them was a great big barrier. Well, I got a red uh, handkerchief as well, and red is the colour of love, and it's the colour of blood. That Jesus, God the Son, came down from um, heaven to earth, to break down the barrier that is separating God and man. Jesus allowed himself to be arrested, to be, to be punished, to be put to death on a cross as a substitute for us, for the things that we've done and uh, said and thought that were wrong. And then when they finished, they took Jesus' body and they put it into a cave or a tomb. And when they put it into the, to that cave, they rolled a great big stone in front of it so that nobody could get into that at all. Well, when the disciples came on the third day, they came and, the, and that, that uh, stone had been rolled away. They were able to go into the tomb and when they got there, well, God had done something amazing, something incredible. God had done a miracle. You see, God had brought Jesus back to life. And he'd uh, done something that I, I can't possibly do. He'd done a miracle, I'm only going to do a trick. But uh, it's a trick that kind of explains a little bit what happened through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus broke down through the uh, barrier. He bridged the gap between God and man so that man could know God and to know him personally. God still does miracles. And the biggest one that he does, I'm guessing, is when someone says that they, that they believe in God, they say that they're sorry for the wrong things that they've done and said and thought, they, they turn their lives back to God and live their life for him. And when that, when that happens, they can be joined back to God in friendship through Jesus Christ. And the reason I've been doing this, because it hopefully will illustrate that kind of miracle that, that God does with this little trick. There we go. You see, God and man are joined back together in relationship, in friendship, because Jesus has bridged the gap to bring them all together.